This episode of Fragbox TV is brought to you by the world's most beautiful nano reef tanks. Start your reefing adventure at reefcasa.com. What is going on, American fan? March here. This is Fragbox TV. Fragbox TV. Fragbox. There ain't no party like a Fragbox party. Okay, what are we doing today? We're gonna do a <laughs> unboxing video. We have some new corals in. Hey, if you're new to the channel, welcome. The store doesn't usually look like this. This is a saltwater aquarium store. This is a vlog, and we try to kind of mesh together education with entertainment. Usually the lights are on, and you can see our beautiful saltwater aquariums. Everything to do with those things. Let's jump into it. I haven't done a giveaway in a while. You know what? Let's give something away. And then we're gonna get into the unboxing. Look at this, 12 boxes, beautiful Indonesian corals. I think there's 170-ish new ones in there. Reef Casa, Villa. 12 gallon, all in one. I'm gonna give this tank away. You know what? Someone's gonna win this. You know what? You can have a lid too. You need a lid? Here you go, I'll give you a lid. Look at that, Reef Casa, custom made. This plastic off, look at that. Mmm, what else you need? Filter floss, throw it in there. You need some carbon? It's yours. Turn pump, done. I don't know why I'm throwing stuff. Not complete, what are you gonna do with all that? You need a light, right? Take one of these. Reef Casa, beam, LED light. Away, early Christmas, here you go. Light march, come on. But I think it would go nicely with one of our custom in tank, our uh, media baskets here. We call it the housekeeper. Fits so nicely. Oh, right there. Not good. 250, 350, 450, 500 bucks. That sound about right, huh? Lid on. You guys are gonna have to comment and subscribe. If you're not a subscriber, you can't win. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I don't like seeing wires, so I don't think you do either. So I'm gonna give you one of our filtration cover. Boom, how nice is that? Hide all the clutter, hide all the wires, still notched out so that your light can come up and over. Okay, let's get into the unboxing and you watch a little bit and hear me rant and talk and, and we'll get into it and then you can uh, learn how you're gonna win that tank. Someone's gonna win it. Get out, our new display tank here at the front of the store. Our very, our Fragoon, our shallow lagoon frag tank hybrid system. It's actually gonna get its first corals right now, right out of these boxes. Bunch of acro in here. I'm still waiting on some MP40s, but I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Tia said this is the best scape I've ever done, and uh, I would have to agree. I think it looks pretty cool. Can't wait to see some fish in it as well. Okay, first box. Let's cut it open. Let's check it out. Oh, look at this. You guys want to know how you're going to win the tank? I'm going to tell you, but first you're going to stick around for some unboxing of ta-da! New coral. We've got acro. He's going to be all acro. Um, let's open some of these up. Let's see what's up for my trusty razor blades. Not here. How about here? No. Gosh darn it. Let's go to the haunted basement and find them. And while we're going down there, I'm going to tell you guys that I'm not going to be swearing on this channel anymore. No, this is creepy. Ah, the lights don't work. Ah, it's scary, scary here at night. No, whatever's down here, um, there is an entity that lives in the basement of Fragbox. Oh man. Uh, but it's it's um, it's nice. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's go back upstairs. Um, it doesn't really bother us. It just moves stuff around and makes sounds and stomping and stuff. But it, it doesn't hurt anyone. Um, whatever it is, it them he she they I don't know whatever whatever's going on down there. It's 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 a kind ghost. Tools of the trade. <laughs> Y'all like when are you gonna tell us that we can win? Before we get to that, I need my gloves, guys. Come on, come on, boys and girls. But I'm not gonna swear anymore on the channel. Believe it or not, I do own a tripod. I just don't like it. I like the shaky cam. I want it to feel like the Blair Witch Project, but reef takes. I'm trying to set up the tripod. Hello. Okay, this is probably the dumbest possible angle I could ever do. 
It's ba you're balancing right now on top of some boxes, some coral boxes, but um, I think I'm gonna make it work. Okay, so let's start opening some of these and then I can tell you. Bam, look at that. Water, clear, let's see, give it a whiff. How's it smell? Mm. What's the salinity? Ew, 1.025, perfect. Nice and clear, no stinkiness. Um, water is like cool, like cool. Yeah, we don't want it too hot, we don't want it too cold. It's acro, so if anything, I want it on the colder side. Uh, Canadian Reef Master can explain to you why we don't dip before they go in. He did, I think, the best explanation yet. And you guys still want to know how you're going to win that tank. I am going to tell you, I promise. It's just, it's 12.30 here. I'm alone. It's late at night. So, you know, you got to keep me a little bit of company and listen to a little bit of my shenanigans. Oh, this is a very nice yellow microclados. And then I'm going to tell you, um, but if you don't subscribe, you can't win the tank. This is what we will call or what they call uh, Pikachu. You can't really see it there, um, but the yellow on this thing is just beautiful. I think it's a microclados. That's the Latin name. So I'm always trying to brush up on the Latin names. I just feel like I should know them um, doing what I do. You know, it's kind of a pain in the butt to remember them, but I feel like way more scientific. And this is a very nice piece too. I'm not sure what that is, but I feel like People always ask me, they, they expect us here in the shop to know, so I do try and go back and refresh myself. So when we get shipments in like this, that really helps. That's a good refresher course. And um, I'm not really sure how else you would know them unless you were in the industry or I guess um, maybe a scientist that studied these things um, or a hobbyist. But um, Jake Adams had a crazy knowledge of these acro. I don't even know what I'm looking at now. Uh, I'm gonna have to go back to my reference book, but I can tell you so far, they look very, very healthy. Temperature is really good. I really like this slight setting. I'm running right here on this tank. These are, let me turn the camera and show you. These are the Radeon G6 Blue. And I'm really liking this live demo color rendition that I got going on right now. So the plan, I keep talking about this tank. It's finally here. It's, it's in motion. I want a place to display our colonies, but I want it to look nicer than uh, frag racks but I also want a place to kind of grow out corals. And this is the concept that we came up with. Now I have to work on how to work out like organizing and pricing because I really like transparency. I don't want customers to think that we're ever making up the prices on the spot. Like, yes, we do make up the prices, obviously, but the price is set beforehand. The price shouldn't change and doesn't change based on the customer. And for some reason, that is a very, sidetrack, very nice pink. If you're looking for pink millipora, Frag box, we've got at least one. I think there should be three or four in here. Um, really, really nice pink on that one. Usually these would retail colony size about 200 bucks Canadian is what I'm gonna sell them for, which works out to about 100 and maybe 40 US. Hey Google, are you on? What's 200 Canadian and US dollars? 200 Canadian dollars is approximately 144 United States dollars and 80 cents. 144 United States dollars and 80 cents. Um, for a colony of Acropora. This is, ooh, a Bratanoides. This is sick. We don't get this. I'm really geeking out on it. We don't get this sort of species too often. And if you ever uh, see the Tropic Marin Bucket of Salt, that's actually the Acro that's on the front of the bucket. And this one has a really cool green base and then finishes with like a sort of red, purple tip. It can take a lot of light. You can't bleach this coral. Like in terms of photosaturation, this can take more par than just about anything out there. You're not gonna bleach it by putting it really, really close to the top. So if you're looking for a coral that can go up there, that is definitely one of them. But usually what I was trying to say about the pricing, we're gonna sell these frag by frag. I find that even if I list in the colonies, haha, that is the second pink milli. I don't know if you can see, I hope you can see the pink on it. Really cool. Um, I will post the colony for sale, but generally this is just gonna get, people want francs, they want, you know, uh, we would do probably 30 bucks, 40 bucks, that's a big one there, 60, maybe $70, and that would end up being three francs. I find that customers really, um, they just prefer francs, I guess. Um, everyone's tank is kind of getting smaller, and instead of buying one piece at two to 300, they prefer the variety and get 10 pieces and see how they do. And then you kind of, you get to watch them grow at the same time. When you buy a colony, you know, you get that instant gratification, but you didn't really do anything other than spending the money and then now you've got a big colony. But it, it really depends on your tank size. You know, if you've got a three, 400 gallon fridge, sometimes just don't make sense. These are looking really good. We've ordered from this guy many, many times. I know what to expect. I know what species to look for. That's a beautiful piece. Um, and he treats us really well. Like he knows what we're looking for. We got to meet them when we were in Indonesia earlier this year, that was February 2023. 
and that was a great time. We were making some great videos. It was so cool to see where this stuff actually comes from and go out in the ocean. Actually, we should go and back and watch some of those videos. They were some of the best uh, videos that I've made and some of my favorite because I get to travel and make them. This looks like Acropora Chester, which is kind of a weird species we don't get too often. And this tank is going to fill up really nicely. The only thing is I don't have enough flow. I'm waiting on some demo MP40s to put on here, so I decided to go with three, maybe four of them, plus two Neptune waves. Okay, we're almost through the first box here, so I can tell you how you can win them. Um, this is pretty typical here, late at night, unboxing these. If you've ever thought about opening a store, I get a ton of emails, people asking me how and how much, and oh, Acropora humulus. This is a weird, stubby, kind of looks like, like thumbs or toes, and sometimes comes in blue. This one, it looks like it's a red humulus. This is a kind of unusual species. Very, very unique. I can ID stuff like that, a humulus, a bratinoides, right away, because there really isn't anything that looks like them. So, if you ever thought about opening a shop like this, um, you gotta be okay with working late, because you don't get to decide when the corals come in if you're importing direct. Ooh, Acropora, uh, Acropora caroliniana. That's a very cool species, one of my personal favorites. So you have to keep that in mind, even if you have, you know, let's say the finances together, because something like this costs about, I would say hardware alone and stock the shelves, you're probably about 300,000 bucks. So I don't mean to discourage people, but if you want to do it properly and not half-ass it, it takes time, it takes money. Um, there is quite a big uh, initial investment. So even if you have the finances in shape and you think that you live in a good market, so that's another thing to consider, like, how many other stores are around you? You know, um, you gotta you gotta try and gauge. Is there room for another shop? Is there even enough people in that city to justify or town or wherever you live? One in particular. This looks like a enchanada. Wow, this cool species of acro. Really unlike anything else. Check that out. Oh no. You know what? I take that back. I think this is Carduce. I think it's Carduce, but really branchy. So it looks like enchanada. So you really want to do some market research and see if. If a store makes sense, like, is there competition? Who are you going up against? If you're the only guy in town, you know, maybe there's a reason. Maybe there isn't enough of a population to support the store. Maybe it's been tried before. What are you going to offer that's different? Because, you know, you're going up against, there are some huge players. I'm just talking mainly from the U.S. Um, there's some big, big players. What are you going to offer that's different than, you know, let's say Title Gardens, who's at the top of their game in terms of everything? Um, Worldwide corals, you know, um, all the smaller guys that offer all, all you know, there, there's just so much competition, and you got to sort of figure out what is, how are you going to be different, or what's your niche. For us, it's always been service. So there are other stores with very nice corals. You can go out and buy your Neptune and your Ecotech and your Nios and that from other places or online as well. We do them online, but there are other online retailers. But I think for us, is service. When you need help. Um, we use this stuff, we're all hobbyists here in the store. You can always come back in, we'll sit down, we'll diagnose, we'll fix it for you. We'll give you our honest recommendations. Um, I think we just go a little bit above and beyond what most stores do and what's more than what's expected from us. So I think that's why we've been able to have more than 12 years of, you know, thank God, thankfully successful business. I'm not complaining. Um, every year it's just been growing. This is Acropora Rosario. Very cool species too. It can get a really cool orangey yellow. As, a, as it grows up. This is filling in really nicely. So it's been a lot of work over those 12 years. So I think the YouTube channel is now about two years old. So you guys are just witnessing sort of the success of Fragbox. You didn't see the, the failures, how many times I really messed up, you know, over the past 12, 13 years, all the mistakes that I made, um, how much money and time I lost, just learning because there's really, there's, there's no school for this. There's no, there's no rule book. I keep saying that I want to make a longer sort of well thought out video series, how to open your own shop like this. And um, I know it might seem kind of stupid because then I'm, I'm not actively trying to create competition here in this city or in Canada, but I feel like the market's, it's big enough. You know, I've seen a store open and close every six months for the past 12 years here uh, in Ontario, or at least in Canada. One store opens, one store closed. They come, and they go very, very few of them stay. So I'm not really worried or concerned. Our our sales haven't changed in that time. I mean, our sales haven't been affected. We only grow. 
over time. So I feel like if that video could help other people, um, that's something I really want to do and I, I want to do it um, properly. Oh, if you're looking, that, that leads into a nice segment. So we can give away that root pass to take now huh? because we're just about at the end of this box. And if you're looking for one, you don't happen to win this one. Um, I'll tell you, there's a new store in Florida that's now carrying them. It's going to be there next week and you can pick up your tank from them. So it's in Isla Dora, Florida. It's called Underwater Creations. It's a new store. His name's Jamie. And um, he's really doing, he's doing it proper. Like he's not cutting any corners. We've been talking a lot through email and uh, showing me how he's doing it. And it is a sweet, sweet setup. This is a also sweet, sweet coral. This is a Acropora efflorescence, or we just call it efflo. I think there's only one on this order, quite rare, quite beautiful. This is a real, really, really nostalgic um, piece for me. Um, this acro that I remember always like coveting and looking for, and it really gets the craziest blue tips. And I love the way it tables too. The growth structure is very different than a lot of the other ones in here. Hey, so far, not even one DOA. Okay, two pieces left. How are you gonna win that tank? One, you have to be subscribed. If you're not, and we pick you, you're not gonna win it. So press the subscribe button. Uh, number two, I want to make it more interactive and you guys have given me some great video ideas over the years So I want you to comment below um, A video that you would like to see but also something that you think will be helpful kind of like this one that I'm talking about about making a series about how to open your own store Give us some ideas. We're gonna pick one and then the winner is gonna get that tank shipped to them um, completely free along with the light with the filter media with the filtration cover with everything that I just showed you at the beginning of the video. It's about $500 value there. So if you want an all-in-one tank or you want to give it away, give us, um, give us uh, some suggestions for the next video. We're going to pick it and then we're going to do it. And now I'm going to show you the first not so happy coral. I think I'm probably the only channel out there that shows you dead coral and shows you the bad. This smells like a baby's diaper. It smells awful. The water's murky and this was a Aquapora Hyacinthus. You know what, it still has a chance. You see here, the white, this is no good. This is all dead, this will never regrow. This is Saifani forever, you know? It will never come back. Life is very short, you know? We're here for just this little brief amount of time, but this is dead for ever, like 100 years, 500 years, a million years, eternity. This is never coming back. So I'm getting a little upset thinking about it, but I'm still gonna pop them in because half of it may still survive, may pull through. I haven't figured out yet how I'm going to get these acros to sit without moving. I need some sort of like Acropora colony holder that still is mobile but looks like rock. So if you got any cool ideas out there, you guys have given me some really good ones over the years. Um, how do I do it? Let me pick up the camera and explain what I'm thinking. And maybe you guys can shoot me an idea on top of the next video idea as well, s'il vous plaît. Oh man, ah, this is quickly going to become my favorite tank. It's looking so nice. Look at these colonies. Now, if they don't sell, I don't care. I just keep them all and just let them grow out and do their thing. This is the pink Millie I was talking about. Look at the color on that, right out of the bag. Almost like two day transit time and you, you couldn't even tell. This is a very good time of the year to ship for us here in Canada. It's about to get quite cold. So we're in November, going into January, February. Not so good. Fall is probably the best month. Um, stuff is showing up. Look at that, just perfect. That's a Acropora Yonge, also known as a Slimer. Check out the yellow on this. Okay, so what I was asking help for on top, I haven't been asking you guys for a lot. You know what? Tip for tap, right? Look at that. Oh, hold on, one sec. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that right there. Look at that arch. Look at that. Right. Look at that. Oh, look at that crevice, right between the rocks. It's just freaking. I'm not swearing on the channel anymore. I got an email. Someone that said, "Hey, we used to love the channel. You're swearing far too much. It's not appropriate for me and my daughter to watch anymore. Just thought I would give you some feedback." Um, all the best and like you know what I don't need to swear I do not need to swear I can hold it in I don't and we do get demonetized on some videos so it's not worth it I know you guys like it you want to hear that raw reefing but uh, let's keep it family friendly because we can keep it entertaining but also educational without the foul language and I think it makes the whole channel um, that much better look at the color on this boom okay so how do I keep I don't want to epoxy them to the rock because let's say you come in and you want to buy that I'd like to sell it to you um, how can I keep them from just falling over? Because there's going to be lots of inverts in here and fish and crazy flow because we have hard corals which need a ton of flow. So how can I keep these without, you know, 
permanently epoxying them? Can I maybe make some some bases? Or you guys get creative. Let me know. Give me some ideas. Um, I was going to use these from. Oh, I miss Alejandro. Amazing. He went back to Colombia permanently. He moved back there. Um, my friend, he makes like a lot of the ceramics things. He makes all the frag plugs in the shop. Um, he made these here. So my plan was oh, to use some of these to display frags. So I'll, you know, if we have a big colony, my plan was to um, set up, let's say, three frags there with a price. So that, you know, if you want the colony, sure. Or if you want just a frag of it, I'd like to have them ready to go next to it. I'm not crazy on how they look. It kind of looks like a face from Scream um, from this angle. I don't like that. Um, maybe I'm just nitpicking. I'll get used to it when the core line. No, I can't unsee it. Look at that. Once I said there's a face, that's it. You're done. Uh, Than at Title Garden said something to me once that really stuck with me. And he said, the best kind of perfect is done. So a lot of times I'll jump into projects and uh, I do as much planning as I can, but it, uh, often doesn't, there's not that much and I just kind of get into it and then I, I develop as I go. So um, I'm like, let's just get it done and then we'll improve, improve. Like these tanks have changed over the years. The racks, the numbering system, the website on how it works, and it's pretty good. Our what you see is what you get section here. It's actually expanding, so we offer one through 100 pieces. This is gonna expand up until 150, and then maybe even 200. So I want this tank, everything that's in here, always to be for sale. I don't ever wanna tell anyone, sorry, that's not for sale. They're all for sale, unless someone has already bought it online, Everything else that we want to hoard, I have the whole basement. I'll just put it downstairs, out of sight, out of mind. You know, customers are happy because the whole tank is up for grabs. So I'm going to keep making these. That's my project next week, is to continue making the numbers. Um, it is a little bit labor intensive. I like I, I hand cut all these with my table saw, and then I get my friend to print these, and then I have to glue them down. It's a lot of work, but um, it's worth it. So this will extend all the way into like 200. What you see is what you get. Colonies. I think it's just going to look fantastic too, just from like an aesthetic point of view. Um, it's gonna look dope just to have the whole tank numbered out. It is gonna be a little bit more cleaning because for every rack that I make, I have to make a, um, another rack basically on hand that's ready to go for when we swap them. So these get covered in Coraline and algae, we take them out. So I gotta make double of everything that um, you see here. I want to do that level of organization here but still have it look nice. I haven't figured that out yet, and that's where you guys maybe can come in, shoot me ideas, please. There's no such thing as a dumb idea. Um, there's only ideas on top of ideas. Okay, let's keep unboxing and see, let's get into some of the LPS. Let's see what we have here. Looks like Euphilia. Which type? Para Ancora. Ooh, let's open, that's good. Clear water, like clear water, Florida. Super sophisticated. I have a trade secret for opening these takes. It's taken years to develop this razor blade and this thing from Dollarama. Okay, you twisted my arm, I'll tell you. That's how it's done. Don't share it with anyone, please. Okay, these LPS are looking really well. They don't look good right now, but from experience, they look really, really sweet um, for just having traveled as far as I have some nice cool torches. Some really cool hammer bouquets. Let me show you them over here. They're looking like great success, you know? Great success. This channel, great success. YouTube, great success. The store, great success. All of it, great success. What else can I tell you about opening a store like this if you want to have a great success? Here, let's change angles. Let's set it up on the tripod. New angle, who dis? Um, I think that you should probably be in the hobby for about 10 years before trying to get into something like this. You should probably crash and burn at least once, you know, completely bomb the system as we have done. Check out that video called We Bomb, Everything Died. That wasn't fun. I've done that a few times actually. Nothing to be proud of, but it happens to the best of us. Um, so before you decide to do something like this for a living, you may want to go through, uh, you know, the worst that could possibly happen. So we've had some pretty crap experiences. And I just found out uh, that open brain coral sting scoli. I didn't know that. You see? That's the cool thing about reef keeping. You learn something new every day. Check out this. Look at that. I had no idea that an open brain could sting a scolimia. But you're seeing it with your own eyes as we speak. Look at that. I'm actually a little bit stunned. Um, it's like a $200 piece. What am I doing? What am I doing with my life? This business also may not be the right business. If you're not, I think it takes a certain kind of personality. You have to be sort of service oriented. If you don't like dealing with people, this might not be it, or at least don't do retail, maybe just do online. Sell corals online, if, if you're able to do that where you live. 
Um, you just, it, it just retail, you're going to have a lot of customer interaction. And we deal with a lot of people's problems. So people look to us as a resource to solve many issues. Like somebody called today, um, not even about corals. He was having issues with his Red Sea Reefer 350 gate valve. He didn't buy the aquarium from us. He didn't buy the replacement gate valve from us. But people get stuck and they need help. And I always try and give them the best service that I can, even though that's not um, really my customer. It's not, it's not a tank that we sold them. It's not a part that we sold them. But I'm still going to take time out of my day. I think like that's what I said, where we kind of stand apart from other stores. Is We even get people calling us from the States. I had someone call me recently. We're in Canada. It's a different country. I had someone call me recently and say, asking me for help with a scoli that he bought online and that it had issues after it arrived. And I was like, have you thought that, have you contacted the seller? And he said, no, I wanted to call you first. And my mind was just blown. Like you're calling a store in another country for advice on a call. Why wouldn't you call the seller first? But anyways, I get it. People, so we deal with a lot of people's problems. I kind of like that problem solving part. I love the builds. That's my favorite when someone comes in and they want to do like a custom build. Oh, I'm like, that's my favorite. Designing, building, I really get off on that kind of stuff. So if you don't have that sort of service oriented personality, if you're not just, you know, not everyone's a people person. Um, it may not be the right one uh, for you. I'm not trying to like discourage anyone. I know that I'm being a little bit negative. It can be profitable. We obviously manage to do it. I just like to be realistic because I'm telling you, I've seen so, so many stores close. Like, so many, and I don't believe in partnerships when it comes to this. I've never seen a partnership. I don't know what it is. Something about the reefing stores and partnerships, it just doesn't work. I've seen brothers uh, break up over it, uh, couples. Um, I just, it just, if you can do it on your own, you can do it on your own, do it on your own. Boom, you angle who this. This is gonna be a longer format video. Um, I just wanna kinda show you a little bit more as I'm working here. I had someone comment the other day, 52 minutes, are you kidding me? I'm not watching this. Um, okay, sorry that the video was too long for you. But most of you keep asking for longer format, longer format videos, so I'm happy to do them because I'm here alone. I could just do this in silence or I could talk to you guys as I'm doing it. And I prefer the latter because I feel like I'm not alone as I'm doing it and then you guys are a little bit more involved and it kind of ends up being a little bit like a uh, podcast, I think. So I know that a number of you right now are driving as you're watching this. Pay attention to the road. I know a lot of you are, some of you may actually be at work. Some of you may have just come home and this is uh, the first thing you do uh, when you get home. And I think that's pretty cool. So I think I'll keep doing the longer format because I know some of you do appreciate it. And yeah, it's kind of becoming a little podcasty. I think when we get into the half an hour, 40, 50 minute lengths, um, that's sort of what it is, which I am totally down with. Speaking about podcasts, our friends over at Title Gardens, you have to check out um, what he's built. He's got his podcast coming on the way. So and it's nothing to do with that. This is a sidetrack. Look at these. Oh, man, it's a little dark. Maybe I can move the camera. But these are going to be candy apple reds and they're going to be sweet. Um, he's built a very cool podcast studio space and I cannot wait for that to start and I'm going to ask him if I can please drive back down to Ohio to be a guest on his show because I would be absolutely thrilled and honored. He is really, he's just a real, he's a real gentleman. He's a really, he's a real stand-up guy and the facility is incredible. Um, I found myself the other night at home with a friend after a party re-watching the title gardens video and just it's a little bit different re-watching it when you're there it's almost too much to take in and i get to this point where it goes um ge geothermal heating and cooling and i don't think i fully comprehended what he was saying the building that title gardens the new, the new building that it's in it's just it's uh he doesn't mess around it's that's the way it's supposed to be done forget listening to me about opening the store you want to see how it's done it's done like that. Um, if you're watching and you're from Canada, move to the US. That's what I can tell you. The market there is just, it's something else. It's incredible. Actually, like in terms of size and the amount of obvious, the population, our Reef Casa aquariums that we're selling, um, most of them are going to the US. I would say 90, 95% of sales are coming or going to the US from Canada. These zoos are looking really good. I'm not seeing, I'm just doing a quick visual inspection for pests. And they're all, these are what get, gets dipped because they are so hardy. 
but um, they're looking really good so far. So the thing we watch out for on those are, actually there's a few, there's a few pests that we can get with zoanthids. There's zoanthid eating nudie branch, which I just did a video on, and I don't think you'll ever see someone else or store do a video showing you a pest in their tank, but then showing you how to dip and eradicate it because it isn't that hard to get rid of. But these guys, unfortunately, are susceptible to a few different pests. So we have the nudie branch, or nudie bronch, however you want to pronounce it. There's these sundial snails, but those are really easy to spot. They're actually quite beautiful in shells. And then there's also zoanthid eating spiders. And I think that's it, there's three. The best performing video we've ever done on YouTube was actually a zoanthid video. So if you sort through all our videos, I think we're getting up to like 600 now, and you go most popular, it should be one called Zoas, or the secret to keeping Zoas. And I don't know why, that one did so well, why it has so many views. I've been trying to replicate it, um, and I still haven't figured out why YouTube has promoted or, or has pushed that one. I, I, I thought it was useful, but I, I guess it thought it was really useful. But if anyone has any ideas, okay, I know I'm asking too much of you already. I've already asked you to try and win a tank and to try and help me figure out a modular Acropora colony sort of design over there. Damn. I cannot wait for these zones to open. So I have the lights on in the tank, even though it is late at night. It is going to stress out the corals a wee bit, but I'd like to see as I'm working, obviously, and it'll give me a chance to... Oh, we're good. No, we're good. Um, it'll just give them a chance to sort of open up and then I can start to organize because I'm going to be here seven days a week. We had a staff change here in the shop and that is one of the fun things of being a business owner. As we're training new people, I am working seven days a week. March doesn't get a day off right now. If anyone wants to say happy birthday to Tia, it is tomorrow, the 25th, but she's uh, she's not gonna be in, she's taking a day off. But that's um, one of the things that comes with ownership of this business. Like I said, you have to be willing to work late if you're gonna be picking up corals from the airport. They come at very strange hours. This was supposed to land today at 1 p.m which means I should have had them back at the shop by about five after clearing customs and driving and doing all that fun stuff. And then I would have had staff and help, but the way it worked out, um, it's midnight and I'm doing it now alone. So that's just something to keep in mind. The hours, if you have a partner, a wife, a husband, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, kids, it can get sort of in the way, I guess. Um, but I've always enjoyed it, so it's never really been a problem for me. I, I am a morning person. You guys don't really want to hear about my life, or maybe you do. Maybe you want to hear about how I started Fridebox and how I ended up doing this. I was supposed to go to school for medicine, and I got my uh, bachelor's, uh, bachelor's degree at the University of Toronto in Life Sciences, and then decided um, when it was time to start applying for school that I was not going to do that, and I could not see myself going back to school. And I actually had at the time as well a job lineup. My mom's friend had a really nice cushy office job for me, $100,000 a year, right out of the gate, working for a electrical company. And uh, she was like uh, a head of HR, so she could have got a job for me at any time. Um, your network is your net worth, kids. You know what, really good jobs like that. It's who you know can really help. So I didn't have to apply, it was just, it was just there waiting for me. So I thought, well, I sound really spoiled and privileged right now. I am, you know what, I am, I'm, well, not spoiled and privileged, but I'm, I'm just very lucky. I've always been lucky in so many things, and I just always try and count my blessings and not my problems, because I really have had none in my life. Like, I had, like, one little quick divorce, um, and then other than that, like, life has been really, really good to me, so I can't complain about anything. So I thought, you know what, I just got my degree. I'm not really sure what I want to do, but uh, my corals are growing like crazy, and I've been selling them, and, you know, I think I would like to try doing something like this full time and it uh, was a lot of luck and timing so there was a um, at the time when I first started Fragbox there was one guy really one other person doing this seriously online and the name was Fragalot and um, he wasn't very good so what can I say hold on let's try that I, uh, how many videos I think six seven hundred you I can promise you if you watch them all you will never hear me once say a single bad word about a competitor, another store, another another soul that's involved with reef keeping. Never once. It's a, it's just a rule of mine. I don't talk shit. Uh, or poop, sorry, I didn't mean to swear. Uh, I don't talk any nonsense about anyone ever. Uh, I don't think it's right. It doesn't serve a purpose. 
that's just bad energy and I'm not about it. This guy's not around anymore and it's in context to the story that I'm telling about Sergey Franco. So he was really the only online vendor of corals in Canada. He was around for quite a bit. He was very early to the scene. Um, and his service was crap. You would order a red zoa and you would get a green mushroom. You would order a green mushroom and you would get a dying acro. You wouldn't get what you ordered. It wouldn't be even close. Now, if you drove to his house, he had it set up his, his operation in his home. You could cherry pick. He was very inexpensive and you'd get exactly what's in front of you. And then he was great. You could get beautiful frags for not a lot of money. Um, even colonies. He was bringing in stuff uh, a little bit under the table, but anyways, we're not going to get into that. His online service was atrocious. People would still order from him. Even his reviews online weren't even that bad because there was no one else doing it. So if you wanted frags, this was the only guy. So people knew like, okay, you're not going to get exactly what you ordered. You are going to get something. He's going to ship it. Um, just don't really expect, you know, if you ordered the bends, you might get, you might get something else. So I couldn't believe that that was the only guy. So I saw a little bit of a market opportunity there. Let me grab another box as I continue my rent. Another box. So we're talking, this is like 2009, right after I graduated. Um, Canada's population was like 30, I want to say 33, 34 million people. Quite a small country. We're still small. I think we're only around 40 or 41 now. Million in the whole country. And um, I couldn't believe this is the only guy. This is it. This guy with his not so good service has a monopoly on the market to the point where the customers are willing to accept less than perfect service. So I thought, you know what? I don't even have, all I have to do is beat this guy on service. And I, there's a store here um, that used to do colonies, 40 bucks, any coral, any size, any color, it didn't matter. You bagged your, you bagged your own corals. No store does that today. And it didn't matter what you bagged because everything, ah, sorry, everything was the same price. So he would bring in shipments and we would wait there. He'd do midnight madness. So he would do, very smart guy, he would do what I'm doing right now. We'd all wait outside and it was fun, it was a social thing. We'd like hang outside the shop, you get to see all the crazy coral guys. It's in the middle of the night, we all run away from our wives and girlfriends, we're all hanging outside, shooting the, sh shooting the, shooting the, sh shooting the shenanigans, right? Because we don't swear on the channel anymore. And it was, uh, it was a really cool experience. And then you'd rush the door, there was sort of a unspoken code. We knew who got there first. We didn't need to take names, you know, that he was first, he was second. And then you'd go in and everyone would grab whatever they wanted, bag it up and take it to the counter. And it was 40 bucks a piece, no matter what. I'm talking, it could be anything, any coral. You want a, a thing of gold torch, a thing of zoanthids, mushrooms, acanthophilia, it didn't matter. Everything was 40 bucks Canadian. Cash, no tax. And I see this guy, I promise the story is going somewhere. I tell very long-winded stories. It's just how my brain works. I see this guy that owned this, this fragging operation that I've been pulling on. And um, he's there grabbing all these corals. And I, I think to myself, man, he's not even really, he's not even importing. He's going to the same place I'm going. He's driving from two hours further. I live down the street from the shop. This guy is driving two hours to get there. He's grabbing all the corals. He's chopping them up. And then he's selling them. So it's not, it doesn't seem that hard. I didn't know anything about fragging at the time. I said, let me just try it. So I was growing a lot of corals too at the time. So I was selling a lot of them on this site called Aquarium Pros back in the day. Um, when I first started, um, we didn't have any internet at home. We didn't have a computer. When I first got a tank, I was 14. So that would have been 1990, 2003, 2004, around there. We were late to the game with the computers in my household. My Hispanic father was just not about it. Um, Maybe some of you didn't know. My dad is from Uruguay. My mom is Sicilian. My father's from a little country called Uruguay. Uruguay, Uruguayos. I don't think there's any of you out there watching this. Very few of us, but. Anyways, I was selling them on Aquarium Pros. I thought to myself, this guy is coming to the store. He's grabbing them, he's fragging them. Why can't I just do the exact same thing? Uh, I'll, I'll match his prices. And then all I have to do is beat him on service. That's all I got to do. If you order Zoantha A, I'm going to send you exactly what you ordered. And I did some test shipping with friends to try and figure out how to do it safely. Um, he's, he was out of business uh, within a year of me starting. That was it. I started, nine, ten months, he was done. Um, there, there was just no more room. So that's what I meant. That's what I'm saying about I got really lucky. 
So I enjoyed a nice little monopoly for a time with no real competition, um, at least selling online. There was always, you know, your local stores, but for online, I had a, a chance, a very lucky chance and timing where I could um, build out the business from home with no overhead. And I had a very supportive uh, family, or at least my mom was really supportive about it. Um, very supportive just in general. She just, she never said no or nay and everything was just, honey, you think that's a good idea? You think you can do it? Okay, 100%. I believe in you. What do you need? How can I help? She was just like, she owned her own business and she was, she's just a great, just a great person, just a great human and great mom and love her to pieces. But um, she really helped by just enabling me and um, giving me the confidence to do it. So that's what I mean about timing. There's so many competitors now, especially if you're in the US. I mean, massive, massive players. Part of the, some of the coolest thing about this channel is that I get to travel and visit some of these operations. And we don't have anything like that here. We don't have the, the economy, we don't have the, the population or the hobbyists to support even one kind of coral growing. So that's what I mean about luck. Um, the timing was really good. I had a monopoly. I was making good money, I was living at home, I had no expenses, I didn't have a wife or a mortgage or, or anything. You know, if I didn't sell, it didn't matter. Um, I, didn't, I didn't have to worry about a roof over my head or food on the table or supporting children. I didn't have anything. I could have given it my all and I could lose it all and it wouldn't matter because I was so young and everything was like, it, it just lined up perfectly. So um, I think a lot of people see, and maybe it looks a little easy now, but they don't really see how many years uh, that went into it. And there was a lot of lessons, and there was a lot of learning, a lot of investment, and a lot of time. Um, and like I said, the, the camera only got picked up two years ago. The company's coming up now on 13 years. Um, what I can say that starting from home really helps. So if you're able to do that, and just sort of build it out and learn and practice without rent and stress and overhead. And you can uh, kind of make your clientele and, and meet people and, and, and do it from home as long as you can until you feel like, like I did, that it was time to uh, legitimize and, and move it into a space. So I hope I'm not being too negative. I am, I am a realist and I, I'm just speaking from seeing so many stores. Um, I see a lot of maintenance guys try to go into retail when it really just isn't their forte and they end up going back to service. So they go service, retail, back to service. I see that happen. I've seen it I, I, countless times. So I'm not saying that service guys are not retail guys and it can't be done, but I think that they think that, I think that they think that. I believe they think that the service will somehow support the store and keep it going and they'll have enough clients, but they don't realize that they're two separate beasts on their own and we don't do any service. I don't dabble in it. I give all the service contracts to someone else and what he does is he has those customers buy everything from the shop. So we have this symbiotic relationship where um, if they want corals or, or want need fish or inverts or anything hardware related, it comes from us. That's sort of the agreement we have and I just funnel customers to him and then we can both live and eat and, and it works where I don't have to do service and he doesn't have to think about retail, but the, the pie is big enough for both of us to, to make money there. Okay, let me show you some of the ones um, that have just come out of the bag. I'm talking a lot, so I think I'll put down the camera for a moment. I'm gonna keep unboxing and I'll do sort of a wrap up there at the end. The torches are looking phenomenal. Really, really good. I cannot wait for these to open. We got lots of torches. They're super popular and uh, they're not cheap. So, like I said, they used to be $40 Canadian. Hey, Google, what's $40 Canadian in US dollars? Where's my Google? States dollar is approximately one Canadian dollar and 38 cents. Canadian dollars is approximately 28 United States dollars. 28 bucks. So, when I was talking, telling you that story about the guy selling for 40 Canadian, it's the equivalent to 28 US dollars. If it was a gold torch, man, it was it was the wild, wild west. It was so much fun. Those days are very, very, very much long gone. Um, we're paying now per head on tiger torches and holy grails and dragon souls and all that stuff. So, even wholesale, we buy them per head. And um, we're forced to cut them up because I just, I don't think that someone's willing or going to pay, you know, five, six, seven hundred bucks Canadian for a colony like these. But man, these are going to be so nice once they open. I think these are the largest also hammer bouquets that I've ever seen. And I kind of like what they've done here. Look, it's like, usually there's just the hammer bouquet, but then there's like a whole outer ring of hammer encircling the inner. It's like, 
Hammer on hammer on hammer. Okay, I'm gonna get the acro out and then I'm gonna show you some cool species and we'll keep doing this, but let me get a little bit back to work. Give me a minute. New angle, who dis? Okay, let's keep going through some of these beautiful acropora. Looks like we have another Cardus species, or maybe it's Enchinata. Some of them are hard to tell, uh, one for another. I think that that's gonna be Enchinata right there. It's a little bit more spiky. I don't know how to explain the difference there. Um, I feel like I was being a little bit negative about opening a store, so maybe I should give some advice too, not just like say all the reasons why not and how lucky I was, because it can be done. I think that uh, one of the important aspects is keeping stuff in stock. So if you look at our shelves, I'll give you a little tip. We keep, it, it is expensive, so we probably have at any given time $150,000, $200,000 worth of hardware inventory, but I think it's important to have it because a lot of stores, what they do is they don't stock stuff. You want it, they say, I can get it in, but when you're looking for those big ticket purchases, it is quite, I find for, for a lot of hobbyists, it is quite an emotional purchase. You know, they build up to it. They convince themselves why they're gonna spend two to $3,000 on the Ecotech Radeon G6 XR30 Blue. And then, you know, to go to the store and you're ready to do it, just to be told like, oh, they're not in stock. Um, it's a little demoralizing. And in a day and age where you can buy everything online with the click of a button, like, like absolutely everything and then some can be purchased online. So I think it's important to have it. And also sometimes you find that customers are in a pinch. You know, let's say their ATO, their Tunzi 3155 Osmolator stops working or their MP40 um, WaveMaker right before they're about to go on vacation. They can't wait to get it online. That's where you really come in clutch as a store um, is, is by having it and just not having, you know, and, and having that service that, you know, they, they don't have to worry. They know that if they want or need something, they can come and get it. And I'm also going to just say one thing, speaking to hobbyists now, in a day and age, like I said, where you can get everything online, it is still important to support the stores. So when you need to make a purchase, if you can afford to drive out to a store and buy it, rather than some of the big online retailers, I'm not trying to point any names. I just, it is important to support the stores because without the stores, there is no hobby. So, you know, those those big ticket purchases, the, you know, the thousand dollar or more ones, the, the big hardware ones, the, the, the things that you buy that you dream of and, and save up for, if, if you're only buying small items, you know, your crabs and snails and, and some frags at the shop, yeah, it'll make a difference to them. And if you bought everything online, then, then there's no stores. And if there's no stores, there's no hobby. The stores are really the backbone of the hobby. If you don't have a store in your area, where are you gonna get the fish? Well, who are you gonna go to for knowledge? You were, you're not gonna have a tank. So Canada is a huge country. It's the second largest in the world. I think it's 11,000 square kilometers, which is like 8,000 square miles. We're the second biggest after Russia. And we have an uh, area called Northwest Territories and Yukon. It's so big and so far, there are no stores up there. And so there are no aquariums up there. There are no hobbyists, very few. I would say we get maybe an email once, another beautiful enchilada, an email probably once a year, someone asking us to ship out there. So what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to make is that no stores, no aquariums, no hobbyists. So if you can, just try to go out of your way a little bit, try to support the stores because it is better for everyone at the end of the day. Um, we're in a unique position because we double dip. We have the store or you can buy it online. If you don't want to come here, we'll ship it to your house. So uh, yellow sunset milliporas. This is a very rare color for Millie. This is a blue one. Uh, maybe some Acropora plana and some orange with green tip. These are really, really nice. I should stick them under the light and I'll show you them to, to really show off the color. You need the radions. Today's Fragbox podcast is brought to you by Acropora. Um, Give me a thumbs up if you like the longer format. I will keep doing them. This is Acropora. Come on, you know this one. <sighs> it's not a spatulata. It's, uh, oh, it's going to come back to me. Oh, if I could swear, I would. But we don't swear on this channel because we're classy folks here and we don't need to. Come on, not Formosa. March, you know this. Come on, you went to Acropora University. I feel like if there was a... If there was a coral school that you could get a degree in coral, that a lot of people would sign up. I don't know what the designation would be. I don't know what you would do with the degree after. Um, I mean, not just like being a marine biologist. I mean, specializing in coral. 
I think that would be kind of cool. Or maybe I'm ignorant and there is something out there already and I don't know what I'm talking about. If there is something, I would imagine it's uh, probably in Australia and I should enroll because I can't remember the name of this piece! Come on! It's Acropora... It's not Spatulata. Aspera! Boom! Where do ideas come from? Where, like, how does that happen? I feel like sometimes the brain is like a, uh, like a computer. You just have to go searching for the file. I've been reading a lot on this theory that the entire universe is really just a matrix and we're living in a simulation. And you know what? It could be. I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. I don't mind. I don't really mind. As long as you're enjoying it. What is in here? Oh, look at this. No water in the bag. But let's open it and see. Actually, it looks all right. Look at that. Two days transit from the other side of the world in basically no water. And that looks fantastic. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize where the camera is. Looks great, that's a really nice Acropora Tenuous. And if you're looking to keep Acro, that is a pretty easy one. That along with Millie's, I think that's why I usually order so much of the same, is because they have good color variety. So some Acros I find, uh, ooh, it's a little murky in here. I'm just gonna throw them in the water. Some Acros, they're just, they're very distinct. So I don't need, you know, 10, oh damn, that piece is awesome. Oh! Wait until I turn the camera around and show you that after. Some acros are very distinct, like uh, Acropora efflorescence. We don't see a lot of variation in that one. It's either blue or purple. The Yonge, the, um, the Slimer, is, is like basically just vibrant green or yellow. But when you get into the Millies, when you get into the Tenuous, you know, you can order 12, 15 different ones and you'll get 12 or 15 different variations of that acro. Um, blue with pink tip, red with green tip, uh, nearing rainbow colors, teals, oranges, purples, beiges, if you're unlucky, browns, like they can, they can come in so many different colors. The millies, yellows and greens, orange are very common. We find pinks, we find blues, which are a little bit more rare. But there's a lot, a lot of variation in those two. And they are also quite uh, resilient, they're hardy, they, you know, less than ideal conditions. I, so I, I usually rec will recommend those for people that are looking to try Acro for the first time. Look for Millie, look for Tenuous. I've talked about them so many times in other videos. Look for Tortusa, not so much variation, maybe three or four different varieties, usually closer to the blue color or blue spectrum. But the Tenuous that are, oh man, wait until I show you these under lights. So healthy, really nice sizes too. Like um, this guy knows what to send us. They're not too big. I find that if we get pieces that are too big, they just don't ship well. They kind of muck up the bag. They slime up when you ship them. So there's, this is really just the perfect size for us. Um, maybe four inches tall, two to three inches wide. That's really just ideal for shipping, at least for our climate. It depends on where it's going to, but uh, Canada's quite a ways away from Indonesia. Boom, new angle, who dis? Okay, let's keep going. I think there's some more euphilia in here. We have some merch that is coming out, hopefully pretty soon, some new t-shirts. Um, so if you're looking for one, we're gonna have some for sale. I think right now they are just XL, large in XL. It's basically this, the uh, signature kind of frag box shirt that we wear here in the shop. So if you'd like one, I will let you know how they will be available to you. We can ship them to you. All the proceeds from the sale of clothing, these are hammer corals that broke during shipping, but they're gonna get glued back to their respective plugs at some point. Um, I'm not in the business of selling clothes. I don't really have any interest in selling clothes at all. Uh, I have enough just doing this. That's another point actually I should make because this whole sort of like vloggy podcast that we're doing today is kind of on the topic of opening a store like one of these. And I'm gonna give one final piece of advice, or maybe I'll give more, I don't know if it's the final one. I don't think if, if you wanna do this and keep your day job, um, I promise you that's not gonna work. This is gonna take uh, everything you got. So I see a lot of, or I have seen people try to keep their day jobs and half-ass this or do this sort of half on the side. This is not a side hustle sort of business. This is a full involvement, all of your energy, time, love and care that goes into it. You're dealing with perishables and live animals here. It's, yeah, I think it's very different than just about every other kind of business. Okay, maybe not every other one, but it's, it has its own challenges. You're not gonna keep your day job and successfully do this. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, I've never seen it done. I know two stores in the States actually that closed this year because of uh, something sort of like that. They just 
they kept, this was never the full-time thing, this was the side thing, so. Um, back to the clothing. Uh, man, I'm getting really sidetracked today. Um, I didn't have no interest in really selling clothing, but the demand is there. You guys keep asking and begging for it, and I want to give that to you because you are you guys are awesome. So any profits, any proceeds from the clothing, I'm going to be putting it aside. And what we're going to do is a Reef Casa. These are very nice branching hammer core. Uh, Reef Casa donation for schools um, in Canada, uh, UK, the States, wherever you live. Um, we're still trying to hash out the kind of details on how we're going to do it. If you're a teacher, you want to apply. This is still very early stages. Don't start sending me applications yet, but um, basically any money that we make from the shirts is going to go into this Reef Casa school fund, and then we will send out saltwater aquarium kits to any schools that want to set them up in the classroom for the kids. Um, we've had a number of teachers ask about them after we did that video setting up one here in Toronto. We did that. Oh, you guys can't even see what I'm doing. That. Oh, crap. That's better. That donation of the uh, tank in the classroom, the Studio 12. So that's what I've decided to do with any money from the sale of the clothes. You're gonna have to send in a video of you in the classroom with the kids telling us that you want the tank. And then um, I'm not sure how we're gonna decide who gets them just yet, but hopefully the clothes will be um, successful enough that we can uh, get into that. Why don't I wanna sell clothes? Because uh, I just have no interest. This is really my love and passion. And, and um, it's like, a, a, probably a good source of revenue on the side but like I said I'm just it just doesn't interest me to sell clothing and I don't want to have to deal with sizing and returns and stitching and color and and any of the headaches that come with that so any merch that we do again is just going to go back into our Reef Casa school donation fund so I think that should be pretty cool and hopefully the details will come as we sort of hash them out but you can let us know if you have a specific size that you want now before we order because anytime we've got requests it's usually um well i can just tell you from the youtube viewership these are beautiful wall hammer corals by the way we are actually unboxing as we're doing this um just from looking at the youtube like the um it shows us the demographics we're like 86 percent men 14 percent women if that's how the math works out average range of our viewers is between 25 and 45 um, parents of one kid mostly in the u.s second place with 10 percent viewership is the uk and then canada's only nine percent so we actually have more viewers in the u.s than anywhere else i think it's like 60 i want to say about 60 percent followed up by uk and then that those two countries are actually bigger than our own country's viewership um my reefing fam that's it we're done they're all in the tank. They're looking pretty good. Um, one DOA mushroom and one half DOA acropora, but overall so impressed with these. I'm gonna let them chill. Man, I am so tired. That's like a 14 hour day. Um, I'm gonna let them hang out, do their thing, chill. I'm so happy with the way this tank turned out and it's gonna look even better as the acro start to fill in. This is so much nicer than displaying on a black uh, piece of rack. But again, help me figure out how I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna actually put prices on this stuff and uh, we'll pick up the camera again soon and we'll do a kind of walk through and really show off how nice all of these new corals are. I just don't have any words left in me, but I appreciate you watching this far. Make sure to subscribe if you wanna win the tank over there. Oh, I lied, I do have some words left. And um, we're gonna give it away to somebody, yeah, um, one of you lucky viewers, and that's it. Make sure you stay tuned so you can learn more about Fragbox coral giveaways and all that fun stuff. Bye for now.